Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghosts and Spirits video. Alright, another entry here based on your great suggestions. This one has to do with an entity that is by far one of the worst ones yet. I picked this one because previously I was going to talk about him uh, sometime lastly or so uh, because he's been suggested before. And in looking at the information then I thought, you know what? better not but in this case the reason why I picked him is because I myself do a little traveling nowadays uh, especially this year when it comes to finding places in Texas that are purportedly known for being haunted and when I picked this one it was because it reminded me of some of the dangers involved and so I wanted to go ahead and talk about this particular entity because those of you that are like me that are doing a little bit of traveling in particular of the haunted locations there's still some dangers there and and this one I highly recommend even as fascinating as it looks you would never catch me at this particular location because of the very dangerous entity that apparently is still there to this day and of course I'm talking about the entity known as the Mackenzie Poltergeist in Greyfriars so it, it goes by several names but otherwise uh, probably the best most well-known name is the Mackenzie Poltergeist and this is by far one of the best known documented cases of if you're wanting actual action when it comes to let's say ghost hunting and you want to know a very specific location where you're gonna have a very good chance of having some kind of activity this is it but this is one of the bad things though because you're asking for that activity and based on what I've read I'm about to report here this is the kind of stuff that you want to avoid altogether. So again, that's the reason why I picked this one. As much as I do my ghost hunting, uh, my little mini ghost hunting of sorts, you would never catch me a hundred miles close to this location. But at least it's it's for everyone out there to to take in. So what is the Mackenzie Poltergeist? Well, it has to do purportedly with this guy right here, Sir George Mackenzie. Um, or by his better known nickname, Bloody Mackenzie. Although it's spelled B L U I D Y, I believe they're trying to make it seem Bloody Mackenzie back then, that that's what it was said, or the way it was said. So, what had happened was you have to go back to the 17th century or so, uh, there was a kind of like a decree of sort that was passed during that time period by King Charles the um, second he passed uh, once he came and became I guess king and accepted his throne then he quickly decided that there was gonna be a group called the Covenant Covenanters Covenanters I believe that's how it's called that they were gonna be forbidden for practicing their religion and he demanded that every single one of them accept the new state religion that he was hereby decreeing in his entire country so whenever this happened there were still a group of those people that were dissidents the ones that were saying we refuse to accept this new policy we're gonna practice our continued religion but of course back then that was a time period when if you wanted to uh, essentially have a good chance of being murdered or killed uh, what best ways then it was to defy the king and that's what these people were doing so he assigned this guy Sir George Mackenzie to make sure that he could convert these people these Presbyterians to the new accepted uh, country religion and if not then he was assigned to punish them and in some cases even kill those people that were dis dissidents that were dissenting from this new law so he apparently was someone that took this to the letter when it came to this decree um, apparently there were two sides to him there was the warm family side the kind that he showed I guess to his friends and his family members and those that worked with him um, he was someone that I mean it's uh, it's he's like a professional uh, someone in politics someone that you couldn't really uh, associate anything as far as him persecuting punishing and in some cases killing people and then there was the second side of him where he was actually taking again this decree by the king to the letter he uh, and, and he would show very psychopathic uh, sociopathic just traits in terms of enjoying this new found I guess uh, set of punishments that he would do upon people 
and uh, there was those two sides. What he would do eventually is he was able to round up over a couple of months a good number of people. It was the idea was it was somewhere around several thousand of these people that were still not deciding to follow this new religion. And so he made up like let's say a prison of sorts, which you're looking at pictures here. He stuck them in these prisons. They would either convert or they would stay in these prisons. And then uh, wor the worst thing was this was all happening during some of the winter months there that apparently had to be some of the worst ones yet. I mean, the stuff involving the cold and how um, freezing it got, it, it made things pretty bad. He left them there pretty much to rot. They would either starve to death or the uh, exposure, I guess, to the actual um, uh, harsh climates uh, would also kill them. And if that didn't happen, then he would then torture them and then in some cases even behead them all again in the name of his king. And then, of course, of the religion that they were supposed to follow overall. And this is how bad it gets. That he was supposedly responsible for the deaths of 18,000 people people during his quote-unquote reign so this was a guy that definitely enjoyed having uh, everything as far as um, this new decree followed and this wasn't too long because um, it started the somewhere around 1679 and it ended with this guy's death in 1691 so what's that about 11 12 years or so that is not too long of a time and during that time he was able to kill 18,000 of these people um, so everyone as far as these people and the way they died it was there in that area that alone would have made things pretty bad when it comes to it being haunted he himself though once he died he was buried right there as well in that same location but in a very distinct tomb called the black mausoleum tomb which you're looking at a picture of here so this has to be a place where um, it's kind of ironic of sorts he who killed all these people is now buried with them as well so if those people are truly haunting that location then he's almost like in a prison of sorts being there with them as well if his ghost truly lives there too and they're both essentially just or were roaming around it seems like though for the next hundred years couple hundred years things were pretty quiet thereafter um, obviously there was those crimes those war crimes um, those religious crimes, they stopped afterwards and they didn't continue any way whatsoever and things were pretty quiet. But apparently all that restlessness was being built up by whoever, I guess, those ghosts were, the ones that were murdered, and then of course by him. Because by around 1998, the way the story goes, tied to this tomb, there was a homeless man, unnamed, anonymous, who knows where he is now, but there was a homeless man that was trying to find shelter from some of the, from some of the rain that was falling, and he happened to come across this black mausoleum. And when he was there, um, seeking shelter, he actually broke into that tomb. Um, how he was able to break in, who knows, but because apparently the idea was it was pretty secure, it was pretty fortified, but there he was, he was inside it, and while inside it, safe from shelter, uh, or uh, now in this case shelter safe from rain, he was able to look around and he decided to ransack the tomb. That was mistake number two, because he was now smashing in all those caskets that he was finding. And again, bringing up further restlessness, if you take the idea that there were indeed ghosts that were still around that area. And then finally, mistake number three was he came across the tomb encasing this guy, Bloody Mackenzie. He decided to smash it as well and try to, I guess, open it and try to see if there was anything that he could steal and rob there. But when that happened, there was actually a hole that opened up right underneath his feet. Kind of convenient. Uh, the way the story tells it because it was only at that very specific time when he decided to raid uh, Bloody Mackenzie's tomb that this happened so it makes you think if there's other forces at play but in any case that hole opened he fell down and all of a sudden he was in a new area that was previously undiscovered it was apparently a pit of some sort that contained I don't know how many bodies but a whole bunch of bodies probably a small mountain of sorts of bodies that were just there unceremoniously dumped is how I read it into the hole these were people that didn't even have like a proper burial after their murder again the people that were trying to follow their own religion and got killed because of it and there they were just covered left to right within that pit 
covering him. He was, of course, freaking out because of what was occurring. Apparently, the smell was pretty bad, too, because even after all those years, maybe the way the thing was sealed, um, there was still rotting flesh. Uh, so you can imagine how bad that was. Well, he was able to get out this homeless guy, and he ran, uh, the way it was described, screaming hysterically from the mausoleum. Nobody ever heard from him again, but apparently... The idea was that he basically checked out at that point, like, after his experience, even if he wasn't insane uh, before, he was definitely insane now. But, when he did this, that fateful night, when he not only A, broke into the mausoleum, B, smashed all those tombs, and then C, actually broke uh, Mackenzie's own tomb, and then fell into that pit, he purportedly set off something that was not there before, almost like it was trapped within that location, and then it was set free. Because what people state now is that if you go to this location, and let's say you're taking pictures, you're just happen to be walking by, you not, may not even know that this that this place happens to have such infamy. But if you're walking around there, apparently there's either angry spirit or angry spirits that 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 uh, pretty much have their forces placed upon people that come across people have said that whenever they go by this area they in particular find themselves having some kind of very strong vicious marks on their neck as if someone or something is trying to essentially choke them to death and people have described also marks appearing on their body as bruises almost like they're getting punched let's say uh, with regards to uh, the after effects of it. People have also said that they have felt nauseous coming into that location. Um, others have stated that, uh, and this is where it gets a little even more scarier, that they don't necessarily feel anything there, but they feel the after effects afterward. So for whatever reason, like let's say someone said that they felt the burn, they don't feel it there necessarily. Instead, um, they later on when they go home, that's when they see this thing appearing on their body, almost like a burn of some sort. There's bruises, there's broken fingers, people's hair is being pulled, and the way that ties into the scarier feeling is that with the stuff not happening there but later on, the idea is that sometimes people believe that whatever is there actually follows them home. So it doesn't attack them there, but instead either follows them back to their home nearby, or in some cases, like if you're a tourist, follows them back to their hotel. That makes it really, really scary because now you're dealing with an entity that only is, of course, attacking people there at that location, but it is also tracking them back to their home, and who knows if those things actually stay at their location thereafter. So, anyways, that's all the stuff that's tied to this Mackenzie poltergeist or poltergeists, because, again, there's the idea that uh, this is a 100% known location now where if you truly wanted to have some activity to happen and in some cases have it be very personal activity in terms of the type of, of, of injuries and damage that could happen to you, then if you want to take that risk, go to this location, hang around, take pictures, start talking, start trying to rile things up and you will have a uh, very good chance of an encounter. There's another angle that the story takes, like even more on the uh, on the deadly side. Apparently, there was an exorcist and a minister, a guy by the name of Colin Grant, who had heard of this location, and back in the year 2000, decided to do something about it. He decided to perform an actual exorcism there in the cemetery or in the mausoleum to try to clear whatever is there, set it free or set it away. That even he, when he was there, said he was too overcome by what was located uh, within the mausoleum. Apparently the way he described it was there was hundreds of tormented souls and evil spirits, all of them trying to get through from their end into ours. This was too much for him, and so he ran for his life, but when he did so, apparently he was... Uh, overcome by whatever was trying to attack him because a couple of weeks later this guy Colin Grant was found dead of a quote-unquote unexpected heart attack now one can think still that maybe this heart attack was there in place all this time that's the thing with heart attacks basically they're ticking time bombs when it comes to when they happen so maybe this was gonna happen all along or if you take the angle of of the supernatural then uh, him going there basically 
had this in motion with regards to the heart attack happening. So, so what do you guys think? The McKenzie Poltergeist, very bad thing, or Poltergeist, very bad entity that happens to be there at that location at the uh, at the mausoleum. Again, if 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 you're there. Highly do not recommend going to that location uh, based on all the reports and everybody stating what has happened there uh, if you're a ghost hunter like me. But if you want to take that chance, then by all means try to do so. And then uh, if anyone already knows anything that has happened to them while they're going there, maybe not even aware of that location and what it pertains to, uh, please post those comments below. That would be great to hear too. So, Alright everybody, thanks again as always. Take care.